What's up guys, welcome back to another video in the 92F1 rebuild series. In this video, we're gonna start assembling the beams for the front of the truck. As you guys saw in the last video, my brother got everything drawn up for this new beam kit in the computer, and we had Jimmy over at San Diego Laser Cutting get all the parts cut out for us. And right here is all the parts we need to be able to get one of these beams assembled. I've already gone ahead and prepped all the plate work to be able to get this stuff put together. And I have gotten the two inch 250 wall tube already cut to length and got the angle on this side set up already. So this way, all this stuff will go together super easily. I do also have a couple drawings right here that I'll be able to reference off of that my brother printed up off the computer. So this way I can make sure where the spindle meets the beam, all the dimensions right here are perfectly exact. That way when the spindle goes on, everything is nice and easy. It also has all the internal ribbing numbered which corresponds with these plates right here, which are already numbered as well. So that just makes sure all the stuff gets put exactly where it needs to be, and this beam kit goes together as easy as possible. So the first thing I need to do to start getting this beam put together is start right here on the beam end side. There's five plates total that make up the end of the beam, and I need to start with that to be able to make sure I get my tabbing width correct for the, the spindle, and then the rest of this kind of goes together off of that. So what I need to do is grab those five pieces, which is these two right here, these two right here, which all this stuff is 3 8 thick. And then I also have this plate right here, which is the backing plate, as you can see, that sits right there. So what I need to do is get my misalignments, get the bolt that will run through all this stuff, and then get all the spacing set up properly, and then we can start assembling the rest of this. Got this beam end assembly together, got all my tabs where they need to be. I did use the misalignments out of the spindles, that way I know the mounting width for where the spindle actually mounts onto the beam is correct. I'm also using a shock shim on both sides, that way it's giving me just a little bit over what the width needs to be, that way once all this stuff gets welded together and I pull these misalignments out, I'll have a little bit of wiggle room uh, to be able to slide everything together nice and easy. I am using just some three quarter inch all thread on this just to keep all the tabs nice and straight in line. That way when everything goes together, when it's all finally done, it goes together nice and easy. So you can see right here too, now that I have all these four plates put on, this piece right here slides together nice and easy. There's no play in this deal at all. Everything sits in there nice and tight which is crazy to me, just being able to draw this stuff up in the computer, this is the first time we've ever done this, to now having all this stuff just kind of key together and work exactly how it should, it is absolutely insane. So now that I have this beam end assembly put together, I can go ahead and start tack welding all the little joints in here, that way this doesn't want to move around or anything while I start going on to the rest of the beam. So after I have this tacked together, I can go ahead and get the tube slid in here and it keys in between these two tabs right here and then lands up against this back plate. And to be able to get the angle correct for the tube sitting in here, which is super critical to how the rest of this beam goes together, I need to get this overlay plate kind of laid on to the top side of this and the top edge of this plate right here lands halfway across the edge of this tube. So that kind of gives me a good reference point to figure out exactly where the angle of the tube needs to be. Now that we got this beam to this point, we got the side plate on, the tube tacked in, and now we got this bottom plate on just to help us locate where these ribs actually need to go. I can go ahead and start setting these ribs down in here, and every one of these ribs lines up with the outside kind of slit to be able to weld the outsides together. So you can see that one will sit just like that. So yeah, just like that, they all key in and line up exactly where they need to on that inside rib. So now we can go ahead and I can tack all these together and just get them in place and then start welding all the insides of these to the tube, to this bottom plate, and then I'm gonna weld the insides where I can 
inside of here. That way everything is tied together as much as it possibly can be and there's no desire for any of this stuff to want to move around inside of there. And then before I end up putting the other overlay plate on, I'll spray all this stuff with spray paint once I have it all welded. That way the inside of this beam does not want to rust or do anything weird like that. So now that all the ribs are in place, I can go ahead and start welding all this stuff together. That's clean. All right, so I got all the internal welding done on this beam. You can see I welded all the sections up on these ribs from basically this bend point right here in the beam where the plate comes kicks up. This would be technically a weak point right here where the beam gets a little bit narrower. So I did weld all the ribs fully all the way across, all the way up until that point, and then the rest of them all the way down I just kind of stitch welded each side, making sure I welded the entire length of the rib, but split it up between the two sides of it. And then obviously welded everything to the tube and everything to the plate. So now what we can do after we've painted it is I can go ahead and grab this other overlay. This overlay should line up exactly like the other side. Pretty close to that. And you can see all the internal ribbing does line up. So all I need to do now is just go ahead, get this tacked on, and then I can start burning this whole side in. ourselves some beams boys oh la la everything went together super nice on these things all the plate work fit up really tightly all the brakes and all the plates lined up exactly how they should which was all thanks to san diego laser for getting all the pieces bent and just doing an excellent job on all that stuff i do have a decent amount of time in welding all this stuff together i didn't keep track of hours but it was definitely a couple days worth of just hood down welding these things together all the main portions of it is all MIG and then the overlays front and back are all TIG welded and all this stuff is dual pass so it definitely takes a bunch of time to get that done. I did end up adding another plate to the bottom side of the beams too which runs from basically where the tab is to mount the spindle. It goes from here all the way down to past where the overlays are on the side of the beam and around here. And I just wanted to add a little bit more strength to the whole portion of the beam, not necessarily that it needs it, but I'd rather literally build these things overkill the first time and just not have to deal with anything wanting to bend or rip or do anything weird if we land super hard on the truck again. So that was definitely necessary in my opinion. So that is on there now on both of these. I am probably gonna end up adding something similar to this as well that ties in between these two uh, pivots right here. So the spindle will be here, spindle will be here, or the uniball for the spindle. I think I'm going to add something in between the two because originally we were planning on running a bolt here and a bolt here just separately. But I think because the way or the way that I did end up putting all this stuff together, like you guys saw, I used a bolt that just ran all the way across all the tabs. And I think I'm going to end up doing something similar to that and just having a, either a bolt specially made for this application that fits from here to here for the shank or see if I can find something that'll fit properly and then the center of this will just be welded in and then I'll add some plate work that ties in right here so this is all boxed in. So this right here is all the material needed to be able to put together one of the radius arms. These have a very similar design compared to the beams and the way that they go together with the internal ribbing keying into the side pieces just to hold everything nice and tight. But what's included in this radius arm is we have our top plate right here. We have our side pieces, our internal ribbing, our two inch 250 wall tube. And then we also have 
our two inch solid stock that has a three quarter inch hole drilled through it. And this is what connects the radius arm over to the beam. This is the main connection point. But all this stuff is prepped already and ready to go. I did drill the rosette holes already for the bung. So I can weld all four of these holes up to kind of hold that bung in place. And then I can weld all the way around the bung on the outside just so it has a nice tight grip on the tube. And I do already have the notch right here already put in the tube as well. And it's all cleaned up and beveled just so I get a nice good penetration between this tube and that solid sleeve because that is very thick. So I wanna make sure all this stuff goes together really nicely. So what I need to do now is just get my brother out here to help me start assembling all this stuff because it's kind of hard to do just with one person and let's get it done. some beams and radius arms boys got these things all together what do you think dude i think he did a killer job brother a killer job dude. dude this is definitely a first getting everything laser cut and then assembling it all in pieces but i think overall things went smoothly what do you think about the whole process yeah i think it went together pretty smoothly um especially being able to have all the pieces drawn up in the computer and then having them cut out like the precision side of that is just insane compared to cutting it out by hand obviously but this being the first time that we've ever done that it's just crazy to actually see the process go literally from step to step to step and just do it firsthand like it's insane yeah this whole process has been a huge learning curve and just learning how to go from the computer side and get it all laser cut out Huge shout out to San Diego Laser over in Lakeside. Yeah, thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, they absolutely killed it and worked with us on this. Like I said, this is my first time getting everything prepped, so they they helped out giving us feedback, letting us know that we did a really good job, and all the pieces that they cut came out perfect as well. I wasn't a huge part of the process when it came to welding things together. I helped maybe prep some things for welding, but when it comes to welding, that's usually Christian's expertise. So he went through and he did an excellent job on all this stuff. I looked at a lot of the feedback that people were giving in the last video when I was designing this. And there's definitely some things that if we ever make another set of these, that'll get revised. Probably stuff in line with the BMN that'll get redone. And then the inner ribs as well. A lot of you mentioned that there was the gap in between some of the ribs. That's just the way I designed it on the computer. When it came to drawing the sketch to make all the ribs, I made them meet up at the center line of the two inch tube and those tabs actually don't end up going all the way to the center line. So that's why there's that gap. So in the future, I'll make sure everything's touching when it comes to welding. That way it's just stronger and you're not gonna have any shear points or weak points within the beam. One thing I do wanna do though, is grab the old set of beams and radius arms, hop on the scale and see what those weigh out to and then compare it to our new beam kit so we know how much heavier things are gonna be. I'm saying double. Double? Yeah, double weight. Uh, you might be close, maybe like a 50, 60% gain. These are definitely heavier. We can tell just by picking them up. But I mean, I guess we're gonna find out officially yeah, let's, now. Let's figure it out. Let's see. I'm kinda curious. I already weighed in before. How fat are you today? Very. Okay, so <laughs> this is um, 45 pounds. So a lot of that's in this beam end too. Well, that beams. it's also kinda weird too because it's got the Heim on it, so whatever. It, yeah, but how much is a Heim weigh? Like, <laughs> Two I have pounds? no idea. Like not, not even two pounds. pounds. But, um, no, I'm sure it weighs that much. No way! You want to weigh one? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you it's only like two pounds. Not but even two pounds, dude. A lot of the weight in this thing comes from the, the billet beam end. That's where a lot of the weight's concentrated. So 45 on that guy. <laughs> you think, I don't I'm think this is 90 dude, pounds. Dude, it's, it's double. I'm, it's got to be so close. I'm saying 80 pounds, probably. Alright, let's see. 68 pounds. 68? Yeah. So All 68 right. compared to 45. Oh, don't break up the tabs. Hey, careful, dude. 68, let's just call it a clean 69 pounds on the new beams. <laughs> uh, Sounds good to me. So what let's is that? Let's do the radius. 23 pounds. Just in the beam. So yeah, that's uh, pretty significant. That's a little over 50%, basically 50%. 
Uh, so we'll we'll do this one first. Yo, that's a pretty fresh shirt you got on there, dude. You gotta rep the boys over at downtown. Gotta rep the freaking boys. All right, this one, thing, boy. All right, so this is only twenty-seven pounds. Okay, yeah, that's so light. Twenty-seven. I'm saying thirty-five. Hmm. Maybe like forty. All right. The old ones were twenty-seven. Yeah. So that's thirty-four. Thirty-four pounds. Yeah. Damn. What'd you say? So I'm saying 35. So I think that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed all of Christian's welding. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't checked out the first one where we go through the whole design process of these beams, as well as show the damage on the old ones, definitely go check that out. And stay tuned for the next one where we're going to be putting everything on the truck and just dry cycling things with no shocks or anything. But if you guys like this one, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one. Peace.